delighted to be joined by everyone today um, for the Metamorphosis 2023 uh, Lacuna International Contemporary Arts Festival podcast. Um, at Lacuna International uh, Contemporary Art Festival, the aims are to promote um, quality, contemporary and sometimes challenging art to communities isolated by significant distance from mainland Europe, or offer something local or translocal for both resident and visiting artists through stimulating local creatives and the local culture, as well as to enlarge creative networks and provide a, a point of contact for the exchange of knowledge and sharing of ideas um, and the blossoming of creativity, as well as developing new ways to exhibit, curate and organize large scale art events and support artists at all stages of their careers from all backgrounds. The Lacuna Festivals are proud to have been awarded the Europe for Festivals, Festivals for Europe, EFFE, Remarkable Arts Festival label in 2022. The EFFE label is Europe's quality stamp for Remarkable Arts Festival, showing their engagement in the field of arts, community involvement and international openness. Now around 1,550 festivals across Europe have received the EFFE label and can display this on their website, promotional materials and social media channels. Festivals displaying this label fulfill a minimum of seven out of the 10 designated quality standards as judged by a panel of international festival experts. Lacuna festivals are run by a tiny team of practicing contemporary artists, Sarah Jane Mason and Simon Turner. Sarah Jane is a mixed media artist and creative facilitator and educator, while Simon is an ephemeral land artist, upcycler and jewelry maker, a festival being run by artists for artists. Um, today, I'm joined by the artist cohort of Metamorphosis 2023, Terry Lloyd, um, Melusine Ross, um, Katharina Eisenberg, Simone Tetro, Beverly Porter, um, Odessa Ford, and Molly Gearing, as well as the co-founder Sarah Jane Mason, um, on the theme of Metamorphosis 2023. I will start by asking Sarah Jane about her vision for Lacuna um, International Contemporary Arts Festivals and her understanding of the theme Metamorphosis. Hi Alan, thank you so much for hosting this podcast for us. I'm really excited um, to be part of it. What would you like to know? Um, I'd like to know about your vision for Lacuna Festivals uh, and how it's progressed. Um, and then a little bit about an introduction to the theme of metamorphosis for this year. Okay, um, so... I guess the vision for the festivals is is all around community and connection um, and it being a, a non-hierarchical platform where artists can lead, can curate, can exhibit, can deliver events, can participate, can do all sorts of different things. Um, but most importantly, they're doing them themselves ourselves rather than having things done to us we are actively choosing to do things um so a really good example of that is that the festival theme is suggested and voted for by our artists each year um this year molly who is with us tonight also suggested and developed the festival branding um and we also have with us tonight some artists who are offering events um, as part of the Lacuna Festival's events program. So it's very much shaped by the artists that are in it. And that was a really important part of the vision. Um, and in a way, this takes us straight onto the theme for this year, which is um, metamorphosis. Um, and the theme this year was suggested by yourself, Fanon, and by Deborah Voot. Um, and for us, metamorphosis, Metamorphosis is something that we want to be a part of when it comes to the art world and when it comes to life as a creative, actually. Um, metamorphosis is this extreme transformation from one state to another. And if we could transform how, how the art world operates, then 
don't think that'd be a bad thing to be honest I think that we could um, get something out of that and so part of that is this sort of um, structuring I guess of the festivals um, but, but also this takes part and parcel in the decisions that we make about more practical decisions so for example um, this year our galleries on art steps have got black walls and not white walls just a really simple um, but total opposite to what you might expect in an art gallery. Um, the galleries are all named after females. Some of them are even females of colour. Shock, horror, two minorities. And yet these are big names emblazoned across the gallery building, which is something that sadly still is not the norm in uh, in the big wide world so all of these little actions that we can take we hope are, are a driving force for transformation um, and a metamorphosis that will mean that we're all living in a more equal um, society where we're all a little bit happier Fantastic. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And, um, you know, being so grassroots and this empowerment of artists, run by artists, for artists, the public engagement, the inclusivity, the diversity. Um, and it's really brilliant to see, um, you know, and I think you guys are sort of pioneers in this, where the art world needs more of this, especially empowerment of local and international artists. Um, really fantastic stuff. What we'll do now is we'll sort of go around and ask the artists what um, metamorphosis means to them, um, both in a uh, personal and in an artistic sense. So Terry, we'll start off with you. Um, what does metamorphosis mean to you in a personal and in an artistic sense? For me, I can sum it up with something I read several years ago on a Buddhist website, and um, it has to do with the Tibetan view of art. And the, their view from my understanding is that it's not about technical excellence. It's more about an art, an artwork and the process of the artist coming together and changing through the act of art making. And so that to me is metamorphosis personally and artistically. Metamorphosis means to me the realisation that everything has a cycle. We are created, born, we grow old and die and return to the earth. Nothing is new, it has all gone before. In life and art we look to the past for guidance and inspiration to help us move forward. We are constantly evolving and changing and nothing is static. How does my artwork relate to the theme of metamorphosis? My sculpture represents the notion of human clay, i.e. we come from and are shaped by the earth, the landscape, the environment we live in, and ultimately we will return to it. The sculptures are fragile, with cracks and tears, missing limbs, parts of the body, emphasising our own fragility. I was trying to work out why I'm so inspired and interested in surface texture and realised that growing up in Yorkshire, I'm surrounded by granite, sandstone, moorland landscapes and with gritty, heavy textures. So that influences my work too. What elephant elements of metamorphosis process do you find most fascinating? I think the constant evolving learning and changing, whether that is as a person or through our artwork. Life is a constant learning curve and we're always seeking out, developing new skills and ways of seeing. And how do I explore that in my artwork? Well, I'm always aiming to develop new skills and ways of seeing and translating the world around me and my thoughts and feelings through the clay. Fantastic. Really lovely to um, hear that insight. Um, Menacine, what about yourself? Uh, hi. Um, first, thanks for hosting this podcast. It's a very great opportunity. Uh, to me, I think metamorphosis is, uh, is, is 
it's it's life. Uh, there is no life without movement. It's a, it's a kind of a metaphor for um, for this um, this process of uh, moving, uh, escaping the state of stasis uh, in which you have no possible life, no existence is possible. So, to me, um, yeah, metamorphosis is 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 really uh, deeply uh, intertwined with our existences, with the whole universe. It's a it's the prior condition for whole existence. It's a fundamental thing, and um, and art is also art. Uh, firstly, qualifies a process. Um, um, medicine is an art, you know, as is uh, a writing, and uh, it's the process of uh, taking something and bringing it further, like moving uh, matter to transform it. This is art. Uh, fundamentally, it means this before uh, the, the contemporary meaning that we we give it. So, um, yeah, metamorphosis is to me is is really a fundamental fundamental part of both uh, you know existence and um, definition of the art wonderful wonderful thank you so much for sharing your insights on this and um, katharina what about yourself i have nothing more to add no joke <laughs> i have but it was a um, very very good um, summary uh, for the way, um, yeah, I, I see also metamorphosis. Um, I, I think uh, the festival is very, um, very on point at the moment because we also stuck in a globally metamorphosis. And um, in, in, I think every artist, just as uh, Melusine said, uh, every artist. Uh, does the metamorphosis process in in a individual way, and in my case, I also work uh, on very spiritual and psychological topics. And um, how to say in English? Sorry, English is not my native language, as you see, but I try my best. Um, I I um, work a lot with um, with. Uh, um energy topics i i look from an energetical and a, a bigger perspective on things and um i try to make those energies visual for people who don't see them kind of in my art and one of my artworks we see in the festival is also a phoenix which i painted a year ago i think and also a work called Metamorphosis, with which I made a work uh, a year ago. And um, yeah, both are exactly in the in this topic because the Phoenix, yeah, it's just we. All, I think we all know the Phoenix moments in life where we like, yeah, totally on one point and then build up our own being again and starting something new and that's what globally happens at the moment and so i'm very happy to be in this um great great festival here and, and um your point actually hit very deeply you know the phoenix rising from the ashes uh as yes. well as what you're talking about in terms of the energy um this is something that i've noticed and i'm actually reading and learning more about so it's really really fascinating and thank you so much for sharing that insight um, Simone, what about yourself? What does metamorphosis mean to you in a personal sense as well as an artistic sense? Um, sure. So um, my background, I'm a writer, director and choreographer. So I work um, more in theater and performance and in dance. And, um, you know, I think for a long time, I really thought about metamorphosis more metaphorically. Um, as I think a lot of artists do. So this idea of profound transformation that happens, especially in those really pivotal moments um, in people's lives. But, um, you know, I, I became a mother about a little over a year ago. And so, you know, for me, there was also a really uh, massive awakening to that physical idea of uh, metamorphosis as well and how, um, 
you know, you're not the person that you were before in, in many different ways, not just um, physically, but also emotionally and psychologically. And, um, you know, I've also moved uh, a lot of, of places uh, in my life. And so, you know, um, having lived in New York and Los Angeles and Barcelona and Florence and all these different places, you know, I think sometimes location can also um, catalyze metamorphosis in, in, in people. And so I think, um, you know, this is a really um, incredible uh, topic to be exploring because I think it can really touch on so many of these um, different parts of, you know, what it means to be a person and to be alive and uh, to be to be growing. And so for me, the, the artistic and the personal art, they go hand in hand um, with this theme. Well, that's really lovely to hear. Thank you so much for sharing that and all the best with your journey of um, motherhood and artistic uh, exploration as well. Um, I'm sure even with the traveling, it also adds to that um, experience and journey and insights. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, Odessa, what about yourself? Oh, goodness. Well, for me personally, um, if you knew me a decade ago, you wouldn't recognize me. Um, personally, I've undergone this a great metamorphosis and to become who I am, honestly, and to embrace my, my, uh, my body, my, you know, this, this crazy shaved head of mine, you know, all of the things that make me who I am now. Um, and that transformation for me came through uh, great loss, um, the loss of my husband, my mother, and then my daughter. And so I think for me, like just shaving my head was so empowering, like, you know, just changing everything about myself and becoming more than I am to really step into my own power as an artist, but as a human being. Um, and it was really that for me personally, um, you know, there's no greater metamorphosis than um, that passage in from life to death. And I got to experience that firsthand on so many different levels. And it was that grief that has fueled my artwork. So when I, I literally, and I will say uh, a year ago, um, I posted this quote um, by Maya Angelou. And it says, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. And I just thought, what a wonderful um, uh, quote and and I, I this came up in my memories the other day so this was last year during lacuna festivals that I was already thinking of this metamorphosis and so um, and this change and so it really fueled my art and so in my artwork um, I started to really incorporate myself as the art um, and just really transforming from artist to artwork and I, I know that that is just a very um, bold move <laughs> for an artist to do, especially um, I'm a land artist. So I'm I'm definitely out there in the public eye already. But a lot of what I do is to create it and then get out of the way, you know, so people can view it. So this year it was really more about me becoming the art and to communicate my grief journey and my life and my own transformation through different art forms. Um, and so for me, I use my land art, sculpture, um, color, uh, digital, um, all of these just to to um, portray that. So I think it was for me, um, you know, it was a lovely idea that we as artists, not only do we create art, but our lives are artwork. It's a masterpiece of our lives. And to give that to the world in this way, to be so public and beautiful and and to really embrace um, our nature as, as not only people, but for me as a woman. So it was really a transformative um, process for me. And um, certainly, um, I think this was probably the most lovely theme that we could have had this year. So very wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, this uh, absolutely courageous insights and really honored and um, privileged to, you know, to hear those and all the best again for that journey onwards with the metamorphosis of art as well as the personal experiences. And thank you so much for having the courage to share that with us. 
Um, and Molly, what about yourself? What does metamorphosis mean to you in a personal sense as well as an artistic sense? Okay, well, um, for me, again, I think a lot of us, it kind of overlaps because we put ourselves into our art so much. And I think that's kind of the artist's calling and what you can't avoid doing it no matter what happens. You always put something of yourself into it. So when I think of metamorphosis, I think about, you know, everyone had such good and really poignant responses to this. But I also want to bring up the idea of that you have to start somewhere in order to change into something else. And so I think that for me personally and, you know, artistically, especially lately, I've been exploring the idea of the things that I already naturally had or the things that I have carried with me throughout the entire, you know, artistic journey, because I've changed so much, you know, with, um, as I've learned and as I've grown as a visual artist, but also as a person, there are still some things that have traveled with me. Like, you know, there's things that when I was scribbling as a child, I can look back and see, oh, I gravitated towards this color blue, if you can imagine. Um, my hair is blue in case this isn't showing up on the podcast, but um, then I moved on to different, but I still carry that, those colors into my work even today. And so I think for metamorphosis, you have to talk about, like um, Odessa said, the whole, the whole story, but also um, the, the pains it took to get to where you are, but also um, where you originally started, I think is a really important thing. And that's something that I've been thinking about too. It's a forward motion, but also you can and you kind of have to look back too at the same time in order to get the full picture. Lovely, lovely. You know, a sense of nostalgia in terms of sort of evaluating and analyzing, you know, where you come all that journey and the progression that's been made and possibly a sense of sort of looking forward um, towards the dreams. Thank you so much, Molly. So I just want to ask you, leading on to that, for instance, um, the artwork that you've submitted to the Lacuna International Contemporary Art Festival this year, 2023, how does that specifically link to the theme of metamorphosis? Um, so for me, I have um, two pieces in, and there is one in particular um, that I created at the beginning of this year, and it's of like this very pink and green kind of skeleton with glitter all over it, and that sounds kind of crazy because it is. And um, for me personally, I was thinking about the process of how throughout our lives from the second, you know, we begin to exist and beyond that, we're always changing. And so I decided to take an almost like humorous look at that one, particularly about, um, it's called a portrait of the artist in 2123. And it's uh, basically about how, you know, a hundred years from now, I'm going to look very different. I will probably not be alive. And that's all part of this metamorphosis process about how we change. And similar with my other piece, it's um, a bunch of paper flowers essentially coming out of this uh, frame and the idea that, you know, you can grow beyond your boundaries and everything like that. And that is part of the metamorphosis uh, process too. Fantastic, brilliant, Lo lovely to, to hear that. Uh, and it ring links in really well with the with the theme of metamorphosis. Um, Adessa, what about yourself um, in terms of the artwork that you've submitted for the festival? How does that specifically link to the theme of metamorphosis? Mm. Well, I did several different types of work for this festival. So I started out with a, this beautiful resin sculpture that I created um, with a butterfly. So this actual just, representation of the butterfly. And I use that in several different performance pieces, my own uh, story and my own process. And so I carried this sculpture with me and then came back and did um, further performances with it. Um, for my video submission, wrote a poem called um, I Am Said the Butterfly. And this is a something that I've been saying for a decade. And so um, it, it just came so naturally to, to pair it with some spoken word poetry. Um, and then to take that sculpture and finish it up and, and uh, renew it. Um, I added pieces to it and I built a base for it um, before I sent it along its way. So the physical artwork then um, changed. You know, and I believe I even reached out to Sarah and I was like, is it OK that it's completely different than what I said I was going to send to you? 
And uh, her response was, yes, that's, you know, this is the theme. And, and so the sculpture that, you know, is, is going there is so much different. And unfortunately, um, did not make it there in time for the physical show, but it will arrive. Um, but I think through this whole journey, one thing that um, the artwork has, has just evolved um, and to be in that artwork as the center of it, myself in covered in beautiful coloring and, um, you know, the things people don't get to see is that my arms were broken. Um, you know, the, sorry. I told myself I was not going to get emotional about this, but I'm so sorry. Um, the just the agony and the pain that I was in to even complete this. Um, I think that's just it's a beautiful tribute to what we go through in life, really, for all of us. You know, we all have tragedies, we all have heartache, we all have struggles. Um, but to be able to see um, myself in that way was truly um, quite. Um, transformative it, it was my metamorphosis and and um so the the images are quite striking and beautiful and um you know I think for me um becoming my art um becoming that um has meant so much more to me and I um I I'm thankful for the festival and the opportunity to create this and I'm very honestly, very thankful for this accident because it it literally changed the whole focus of my whole um, purpose as an artist, as a person, and um, what I want to do moving forward. Um, but I think you'll visually see that in these, in the video, in the images, in the spoken word poetry, um, and all of those art forms that I um, do separately bringing them together into one beautiful body of work, um, I think is just quite remarkable. So um, for me, it's, it's, it's been physically <laughs> a transformation. And, and um, so quite literally, it was like the universe was like, well, here, let's, let's um, throw a, a wrench in your, in your plans here. And I just think that's life, you know, it's life. This is what we all go through. We all experience grief and loss and and it's 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 what we do with that you know that's why we make ours you know it's what we do with our life experience to share that in a visual way with the world um and for me it's quite literally <laughs> i think um people could see that through this process um and the video submission is actually all quite out of order too so um, the way it was edited and put together is not chronological. So I think that's important too when people are watching the video is to realize that the ending was actually the very beginning and that was very purposeful as well. Um, so it it was very much my intention to film it or to compile it in that way so that the at the end of this, that was what you got was this beautiful image that I started with on the beach um, before I broke my arms, before everything in my life fell apart. So um, for me, the artwork was really more personal and um, I just am, am lucky that I get to share it with everybody too. So, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop now cause I'll just ramble on, but thank you. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much for a deeply moving and powerful testimony and for being so brave. Um, I think by sharing your experiences, it gives a lot of uh, people listening to this courage and hope. You know, you've taken this immense amount of suffering and you've worked with it. And, and rightly so, you know, you've created this metamorphosis. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Um, very touched, very inspired by it and wishing you all the best. Um, Adessa, you know, I hope things get better. And, and thank you. Thank you for contributing. Um, such a personal and powerful piece of art that I'm sure whoever looks at it, it will really reach out to them. And it might also empower them, you know, by 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 sharing what you've shared in the manner that you've shared. 
it's it's very certainly for me it's been very empowering so thank you for that thank you oh, very much i appreciate thank that you. that means a lot to me thank you um simone what about yourself in terms of the artwork that you've submitted to the festival how does that relate to the um theme of um, metamorphosis um sure so um my current project unsettled is a participatory theater project that explores uh, lived experiences of migration and precarity and social instability. Uh, so it gives voice to uh, migrant and marginalized communities in Lanzarote uh, through the co-creation of new performance work with a group of professional directors, actors, and musicians. Um, so we're actually beginning as um, a digital workshop this month as part of Lacuna Festivals and uh, continuing that work on um, in connection with um, other communities in other locations um, outside of the Canary Islands and, and uh, basically we'll put the stories um, and testimonies of uh, people who um, are, are speaking with us through these community workshops into conversation with one another. Uh, so we'll be taking local stories and putting them into conversation um, in a more global context Oh, excuse me, a uh, global context as well, um, so that um, we bridge the the personal and uh, the local with um, a, a global connection. So um, putting these stories, um, you know, in, in conversation with one another. And so um, I am currently working with a couple of collaborators, uh, including Andrea Ferran and Alessandro Bucinaro. Um, on developing Unsettled, and we are really interested in metamorphosis as a lens for personal transformation that happens uh, when individuals or communities are dealing with uncertainty and with precarity. Um, so for those who don't know, um, specifically uh, the, the uh, section of the project that we're working on in Lanzarote, uh, we'll be working with uh, migrants, and um, the uh, Canary Islands are actually uh, part of the most dangerous sea crossing, one of the most dangerous sea crossings in the world uh, for migrants um, who are um, leaving uh, from the northern part of Africa and uh, going into Europe. And so um, we're going to be working with communities, um, people from uh, communities um, who, who are part of this migration process, but also um, people who are part of uh, the, the community in Lanzarote, people who are affected by um, receiving um, people who are from different places. And so we're looking at metamorphosis in terms of uh, this idea of unsettledness. Um, so whether it is you who is uprooting to settle somewhere new um, and, you know, um, all of the precarity that comes with that, or whether you are um, part of an existing community um, that is uh, dealing with changes that come uh, when people arrive. Uh, and so uh, that's how uh, we are looking at um, metamorphosis in this uh, specific uh, aspect of the project. Brilliant. Thank you so much. It's incredibly interesting and quite a unique um, stance. Um, and I think uh, shedding light on a much, uh, much needed topic. Um, and I'm sure it also will be um, educational um, to a lot of people, as well as raising awareness um, as well alongside you know the, the theme of metamorphosis um, and focusing on real people in real lives um, which is always fascinating you know as humans to sort of observe and sort of um, interlink with so thank you very much for that. Uh, Melusine what about yourself um, what's uh, the artwork that you've submitted to the Lacuna Festival and how does that relate to the theme of metamorphosis? And the um, artwork I submitted is um, um, I'm, I currently, my, my current line of work um, actually um, is all about the process. I, I do not think in advance what I'm, uh, I'm going to do. And I use very, very simple tools. And um, I really start... Um, um, randomly uh, drawing lines on a paper and and I just then dig in, dig into the um, into into the picture and so 
nothing uh, nothing is in my mind for a start and everything is just sprouting from the paper i i really feel like the, the picture is creating me uh, as as much as i am creating the, this picture and as it, the process goes along uh, more and more uh, symbolism or more and more meaning comes into this picture and i let myself be uh guided by it and uh yeah so what I've submitted this year to the festival is is something in this in this in this line. Um, I think also I've started working like this uh, during the COVID pandemic, and so the whole world was undergoing a deep metamorphosis at this time, and it was a kind of a, this strange state where you you shut down on yourself and you are being isolated and in the same time like a lot of things move and they need to get out and and yeah you need to get read read of them or express them and i feel that really uh what my artwork is all about at the moment is that uh, it's yeah it's that deep uh, uh subconscious um state and 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 what is expressing itself in the in the depth of of yourself really um and uh, the resulting artwork uh is uh is neither figurative nor abstract it's uh, it's somewhere in between and and all the shapes that you see they they really i i feel they can be interpreted in, in many different ways i like all the people that i show my artwork to uh, at the moment they they have all these different interpretation. It's, it right raises in them, like it touches them in different places as well. So I I feel like uh, I I really feel very happy about this, that um, that uh, people are touched differently, and the picture is is like the picture is is moving with them. You know, it's transforming with the the um, the onlookers. Um, uh, gaze onto it and uh i really feel very very thankful to to experience all these different different uh point of view on on my artwork and i really feel it's a very very important thing that uh to be able to bring out the the viewers um inside you know and um yeah so I'm sorry, I, by my English, I'm a little lost at the moment. It's been a long time. I haven't practiced every day. Um, um, so, yeah. Wonderful. It's lovely. I'm really intrigued by, you know, when you said it's neither figurative nor abstract. And the sort of artwork that you've sort of described, very unique. Um, very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, Terry, what about yourself um, in terms of the artwork that you've submitted to the festival? Uh, how does that relate to the theme of metamorphosis? Well, I submitted three very short videos that I call, um, it's part of a series I call Boohoo Haiku. So um, I like to break rules. <laughs> and and I create these little videos that are composed in the spirit of haiku, um, where I play with puns and ideas and images um, to capture a breath or a moment or a thought um, with the idea that ideas themselves and memories are transitory and time and consciousness dance on. Um, and with the three pieces that I'm exhibiting with the festival, I find um, that they deal with my impending death because I am older and one day in the near future, I will evaporate and not be here anymore. Um, and then another deals with um, the changing of the seasons in my own backyard, you know, and watching my cats age out and, you know, watching everything change around me. And then the, the other one titled Only Now deals with, being in the present and what I'm realizing and seeing now that I wouldn't have been able to see 
in, you know, in years gone by because I didn't have that presence. And so um, a lot of my work deals with that, with um, recognizing the moment and recognizing that when in another moment, I won't be here. And so, yeah, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, Terry. You know, these are universal themes, you know, the themes of death and uh, changing of seasons, facts that happen to all of us. And you've sort of interpreted that from a personal perspective, which is really unique and really interesting and very authentic as well to allow the audience an insight and possibly allow them to reflect from their perspective by sort of looking at how, what it means to you. Um, very powerful, very interesting. Um, thank you so much. So I wanted to ask um, Terry, what elements of the metamorphosis process do you find the most fascinating? Death. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think it's the big question mark, the big unknown, you know. Um, and I think having it present with me makes everything that I go through from the time I wake up till the time I go to sleep even more poignant. And, it, and even, the, even the losses, uh, and I've had quite a few too, we all do. And, um, but that all of that adds up to making this thing that we're doing, whether it's art making or breathing, or just, you know, sitting and petting a cat or, you know, playing with our children and so forth, it makes it that much more valuable. So for me, it's the recognize the recognizing that all of this is is transition and temporary or temporal. Absolutely. And, and I agree so much with you. You know, I believe in this theme of between worlds. You know, we have this temporary world and th there is another world, uh, an inter internal world. And, you know, I think death is that sort of bridge. Um, because if there's one uh, fact that occurs, it's sort of, it's this concept of death, you know, everybody experiences that. So it's really fascinating that you've sort of um, explored something that's often not talked about so much, but happens to everybody. Um, and I've had that eloquency and courage to sort of um, explore your artwork in regards to that and sort of the concept behind that. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Mel Melisine, I wanted to ask you, um, yeah, what elements of the metamorphosis process do you find the most fascinating? Yeah, I think it's the, um, the fleeting quality that it has, this uh, impermanence. Like the Buddhists say that, that life is impermanence. So for, for me, as I, I said in, in the introduction, I think it's the it's it's really it's, it's this this movement, really this moving quality. That the fact that it's it's uh it's yeah the opposite of the stillness, the opposite of the stasis, and uh, yeah, so so really this deep transformational move this uh yeah this this um yeah very uh fugacious uh, uh quality that it has and uh, to be to be able to transcribe this or as um, as opposed to capture it you cannot you cannot fix it how to express this you know this this is very interesting to me and um yeah i think one of the goal of art is actually to be able to um, make the viewer dive into himself and try to find this this moment where ev everything can uh, like everything can be everything, where all is uh, encompassed in the in this 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 beautiful time that is now, you know, like 
and to shut down the mental that is recreating the past or creating a future that that will never be and just to make everything shut down and and to to be able to breathe from this this state for one minute for me this is the to me this is a goal of uh, of my artistic goal anyway to to bring to be able to bring some people in in this state just a no brain state all heart um and so yeah to me this um this is what i i find interesting in in the metamorphosis like to be able to to transcribe this this movement and to try to make it uh real for for the viewer and and for myself to also be myself in that state when i when i create um yeah <laughs> Fantastic, lovely, love to hear about the heart space, you know, so you, when you talked about all heart, I think we need more of that in the world, you know, we're in a world that's becoming increasingly desensitized. Um, and there's, you know, debates and discussions about the future of humanity and, you know, to be human and our emotions. So really, really lovely, I think. This is something that, um, you know, we can shed more light on. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Simone, what about yourself? What um, elements of the metamorphosis uh, process do you find the most fascinating? Sure. Um, so, you know, I think um, what fascinates me about metamorphosis are these elements of surprise that can often come with change. Um, and specifically moments of resilience. And I think, um, you know, sometimes resilience happens in really subtle ways. And so I think um, the the quieter qualities of metamorphosis are things that really interest me quite a lot. Um, and I, I equally, you know, interested in the totality of metamorphosis. So this idea that you are no longer who you once were, perhaps, um, so I, I'm really interested in how we're shaped by change, how we reckon with it, and and how we survive it. That's amazing, um, especially, you know, when we think about the word resilience and sort of tenacity, it's kind of seen as these very powerful um, concepts that are quite tangible and sort of vivid, but it can also be quite subtle, as you said, you know, there can also be these tiny moments of resilience that really built up a strength of character um, and changing a person you know to to who they are um, so that's really really interesting that you've mentioned that I personally always believe that if you go through a lot in your life it means that there's there's a higher destiny for you and you're just sort of being prepared for it by going through all these difficult moments so that when that higher calling comes you're able to sort of cope with it you're able to sort of deal with it. So that's really lovely and wonderful to hear. Thank you so much. Katharina, what about yourself? What um, uh, uh, pros process of the metamorphosis fascinates you the most? Um, for me, it's the, it's the challenge. It's the um, way how we metamorph ourselves and, and in the global sense, uh, how the developments um, happen, you know, there's always like a breakdown moment, which, which leads to the metamorphosis, you can't, you can not avoid this, this, um, yeah, it's just the circle of life, like we said before, like, uh, there's the dying moment, and then something you need to be created because there's an empty space and this is the most interesting part for me the the rebirth moment so it's no wonder i made a phoenix <laughs> and also in my other work which is a um upcycling um 3d installation on canvas i worked with um garbage and i work a lot with different materials because this is also metamorphosis to put something in a very different um, context and change the topic 
extremely and change change the material itself. And yeah, I like I like very much the creative side of metamorphosis. Also, um, although it's not funny sometimes <laughs> if you're in the if you're in the need to do this big transformation sometimes in life, uh, yeah, if you're in the dying state with um yeah with topics and then you need to get out there it's yeah it's not always easy but life is as we all know it's not meant to be always easy we wouldn't learn in this case so this is the most interesting thing for me to 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 yeah to observe and to to um make it happen and to decide to be the creator in an active way and to yeah to make the decisions and to see other people and creators make their decisions this is pure transform uh, transformative energy thank yeah. you Katerina. absolutely absolutely agree with you it's it's not fun um going through the process because it's not an easy process at all you know no. it's a process of transformation and um yes like you quite a bit of struggle and um Adessa what about yourself what elements of the metamorphosis um process really fascinate you I think for me it's really that cocooning stage if you will it's that you know we spend our whole lives consuming like that caterpillar caterpillar you know we're fat with all these life experiences but it's what we do with those in those moments of self-reflection where we are literally transformed by our pain, our experiences, our loss, our joys, all of the life experiences. And for me, that process of you literally have to come apart to, to be transformed, right? And we think about the the caterpillar and what it has to go through to transform into a butterfly. And it's torture, you know? It's like, I can imagine that, you know, in part of my video, the the spoken word poem, um, and I hope if you guys haven't uh, watched that, you would. Um, there's this line in there. It talks about my wings are buried in my back. And it's this coming out in this transformation stage, because we all know through our lives like this, there's going to be a moment, like Terry said, there's going to be a moment when we pass on right that we've talked about this this death this physical death of our bodies but it is a cocooning at the end and having experienced death on a very personal level um helping my husband through hospice and, and being there for my mother um watching somebody it was such a beautiful transformative and and joyful experience for me I mean of course we feel sadness and sorrow but to witness it firsthand to see that transformation from life to death um it's it's just those moments you know before you emerge you know where you know this beautiful thing is going to happen and and I'm sad to see the caterpillar go you know I'm sad to see that it's gone but what comes from that is so gloriously beautiful, right? And we all, and, and the butterfly is such a beautiful symbol for our lives, really. It, it's the whole process, but it's really that cocooning stage for me that I really embrace. You know, we talked about the pandemic a little bit and, and what that did for all of us. And I think that took us all in turn, internally into ourselves to really look at ourselves because we're almost forced to sit with ourselves. And when you do that process, it can be very painful. And when we transform through life experience or pain or death or loss or our grief, um, it changes us as people. We come out the other side and we're different. And we're always changed by it. And I, I think for me, it's, it's sitting with that pain and processing it and letting it go, really letting it come out of you. And that is what metamorphosis really means for me and is this stage of, of being with yourself and allowing your pain to escape and transform you. Um, because that, that grief and loss, without that, 
I wouldn't be who I am. And so I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for the pain. I'm grateful for the trauma. I'm grateful for all of my life because it's brought me to this place where I can, you know, then share that and hopefully inspire others or give hope to people who are grieving. Um, and I think for a lot of us, we dread the cocooning. You know, we dread that part of the process because that's where all the change has to happen is is within ourselves. And I thought about uh, the cocoon and who that might represent. And that's my family, you know. They're the ones that surround us and support us and love us through our pain. And so they become then this beautiful cocoon for us um, so that we can transform. And I thought about, you know, when when my husband was was passing away or my mother was dying and all of us that came around to support them in their process, we were their cocoon so that they could transform and so they could transcend. And so it's just a beautiful part of the process. I think it's overlooked. You know, I think that part is so beautiful, and mysterious and 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 just one of the most wonderful mysteries, you know, um, that we get to witness as people. And so for me, I think it's just um, it's as an artist and being able to communicate that um, visually or with my words or with my sculpture myself, um, I think that that can bring so much hope to other people. You know, that we all have to go through this process. We all have to be in this cocoon at some point and we will all pass away. We will all transcend this world and be transformed. And the result of which is so beautiful that we can't even imagine what that is like. And so for me as an artist to be able to try to communicate that visually is really challenging. Um, but I think it's quite a beautiful process. And, you know, I've been on this process for for my whole life, but really in the last year through a lot of um, personal struggles and illness and and injury and, and all of the things that I've been through, we all do that. And I think it's through these um, types of forums um, that we're able to share our, our experiences as people with each other so that we all understand that we're not alone in this journey and that we'll all have to take those last breaths and you know the people that we surround ourselves with uh, the loved ones our community um, they're all going to be part of that journey with us and then and in those last moments of reflection in our lives it's the people that love us and support us that we will treasure and remember so. okay sorry <laughs> I've got uh, tears in my eyes. <laughs> I've got tears in my eyes. It's such such a beautiful testimony. And you know, with what Terry said and what you said, you know, this concept of death. Um, I I really think it's not talked about as much as it should be. It's it's so important. It's so important. Our own mortality and the mortality of the ones that we love and um our, you know, our our dear ones as well. So it it really does um it really does make a difference. And you know. From what you've experienced personally and what you've seen um, and sharing, again, that powerful testimony, it really reaches out to people and helps them to sort of reflect. Life is life is short. You know, it's, it's not an awful uh, long amount of time and there are challenges, there are suffering. And even that transition from this world into the next world through that process of death, as you've observed, you know, um, there, there, there is a process through that as well and um, at times it maybe it is that metamorphosis like you said you know as we've discussed this, the cocooning stage is difficult we are sort of um, storing our experiences and what we're doing with it um, that was that was really 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 um, poignant and on point so thank you so much really privileged to actually hear your words a real privilege oh. and an honor thank you thank you thank you so much I appreciate that thank you um Molly what about yourself uh what elements of the metamorphosis um process really fascinate you 
Okay, I'm going purely from like the butterfly in the chrysalis perspective that, you know, uh, Katharina and Odessa brought up. Um, but I looked up a little bit. I do not have a background in science. So like this, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But um, there's a point where you're in this cocoon and for every uh, butterfly, it's completely different, which very much translates to people. But there's this part, it basically liquefies itself. And it's just this everything that it is swirling around in there and it reforms itself and i think that that you know we do that all of the time not only as people but i think as artists we really do that too with our work we have all of our experience and they're all this uh they're this great big mixed up thing and we have to kind of pull it all together to make something bigger than what it was and so for me that's my favorite part of the process just about um how you kind of have to have like the breakdown, like Katharina said, and um, it's not always pleasant, but it is always important. It's what I call, it's this concept that I call the good hurt in that not all hurt is good, but sometimes it's like um, mourning someone who has passed. We, you know, touched on that. That is the good hurt because it is, you're going through those emotions, you're going through that pain, but it's going to lead you to a place, hopefully eventually of, peace in some capacity so i like the idea of everything just kind of falling apart so that it can come back together for something new uh, absolutely um it really interesting that you know you touched upon this concept of the butterfly as well um i must admit from a personal perspective i've always had i think two sort of opinions you know uh the especially around uh, the monarch butterfly and the connotations that it has in sort of you know um in, in some popular culture about mind programming for instance and then this kind of renewal and rebirth of a butterfly coming through as a, a, sh a person showing strength and um resilience and even one of my favorite books the butterfly lion um so it's all these sort of different different viewpoints and this kind of like bubbling of ideas. And I'm so glad that you've you know shared that perspective, Molly. Um, because butterflies are these beautiful light-winged creatures and it's delightful. It's delightful to see them. It's delightful to be around butterflies, you know, having visited um quite a few butterfly gardens. It's lovely, lovely to be around them. But they have gone through that process. They have gone through that metamorphosis to be these beautiful creatures. And uh, and then when we link that to the concept of death, butterflies, I think they do have short lifespans as well. So um, again, that adds that poignancy to that. But then if we link that to those concepts of, you know, between worlds, it sort of all starts to make sense. Um, I'm really, really um, fascinated by the discussions that we've had, and I'd like to invite Sarah Jane Mason into the conversation to sort of ask her what elements of the metamorphosis um, process really fascinated her and her lasting um, words, everybody. Thanks. So I'm going to talk about this from the kind of perspective of um, the director of the festivals, the, the curator, rather than my personal practice, because at this point in the conversation, it feels like that is more appropriate as like a kind of, um, almost like a, a closing <laughs> comment, I guess. Um, the thing that I have noticed as I've curated the galleries and um, really explored the narratives within the theme, um, but also that's, that it was kind of really clear tonight is that metamorphosis at its root is about the paradox of, of two opposites, you know, kind of coming together. And it's like that line, um, it's like a spectrum, isn't it? You know, and at one end you have, you have life and at one end you have death and then there's all of the stuff in the middle, you know, and it's the same, on so many, on so many levels, um, pain, pleasure, ugly, beautiful, you know, and something that I thought was quite striking actually was how intimate and personal some of these themes are and yet how universal they are as well, you know, like how intimate grief is and yet how universal it is. How can something be so personal and so 
um universal to to every living thing you know it's it's really a fascinating thing to think about um i feel like we need to invite a philosopher along next time to our conversation so that we could get some get some answers actually um but it's it's this element i guess that really fascinates me um and seeing all of the different perspectives um like against each other you know like it's it's such a privilege actually being being a curator um because you get to almost like narrate a story with artwork you know it's like this really beautiful process and that in itself is a bit like a metamorphosis everything comes and it's all packaged up in like bubble wrap and brown tape and boxes and my whole spare room is like a mountain of packaging right now but then out of that you know comes all of these different artworks that up until that point I've seen you know little tiny pictures of on my computer screen and then oh there they are and they're real and they've come from Thailand and they've come from you know the United States and they've come from Italy and they've traveled all this way and they arrive and they're totally different to what I was expecting. Some of the time, I don't even recognize the artwork that is in front of me because it's so different seeing artwork in the flesh. And then I get to take it all to a gallery space and, and lay it all out and then kind of tell a story within a space with it, you know, which totally transforms and metamorphoses that space. So it's... It's such a kind of intrinsic element of all artistic practice. Um, and I think that, that is perhaps why um, we had such a strong response this year um, and such a favorable response as well from the artists. Some themes, um, we have a strong response in terms of the open call, but there's a lot of grumbling, you know? There's a lot of, well, oh, I don't really know about this. It's taken me a long time to think of something. I almost didn't submit because I wasn't sure. But none of that this year. This year, there was a lot of conversation during the open call process. Um, and the, the conversations have continued throughout the year. So I think that that in itself speaks to, um, yeah, how universal a concept it is and how specifically for artists, it's a really relevant um, theme.